Hi, it's Brian. Welcome to the Awards Contender, and it's time for my series, Horror and the Oscars, to end, at least at this moment, Cody, because today we're talking about the last big genre movie to get into a ton of Oscar categories, Get Out, from 2017. Cody Derricks is back with me today. How are we doing, Cody? Good. I'm excited to talk about horror at the Oscars, two things I individually love that don't often love each other. Yeah, we talked about The Silence of the Lambs recently. Go check out that video. And we also talked about The Sixth Sense. Those are really the two big genre films of the 90s to get in at the Oscars after The Sixth Sense. There's not much. There's like a stray tech nomination maybe here and there for a genre film. But really, in the last 25 years since The Sixth Sense, there's only been Get Out. Which you could even argue, like, is it a horror film? It's kind of more of a thriller. It's comedic. It's a bunch of different genres in a way. But I do consider Get Out a horror film. Do you, Cody? I definitely do. I think it is exactly the kind of horror that we've seen for decades that uses social themes as a source of fear. It really puts the audience, whether they can identify with the main character's experiences or not, in his headspace and gets you to experience thrills and anxiety through his circumstances, which to me is pure horror. Like, it has elements of a lot of genres, but this definitely is a horror film. So before we talk about the awards run of this movie, Cody, take me back to when you first saw Get Out. Like, what was your first experience with this movie? So I saw it like a lot of other people at its uh, theatrical general release in early 2017, and it was immediately a sensation it was so of the time it became so zeitgeisty it was a hit commercially critically and i think part of the key to the film's success is the way it establishes and creates innovative imagery which i would hypothesize is what gives horror its power is the ability to create and externalize fears that an audience may or may not have and spread them to a wide audience. You know, you think of iconic horror images, whether that's the way a killer looks, something like Jason's hockey mask, or moments like Reagan throwing up pea soup on the priest in The Exorcist. These indelible moments that lock a film into eternity. And I think that's how the genre of horror is able to succeed across the years. I remember I saw it like the middle of the week, like in the afternoon, and it was a packed house. I sat next to two strangers, like on a weekday, like on week three of the movie's release. And I went, oh, something is going on with this movie. This is a word of mouth sensation. And I just, I, I loved every minute of this thing. I've seen it probably four or five times to date. It's just such an original work. Like you can really feel the filmmaker's voice in this movie. The cast is perfection. The narrative has so much tension and humor all the way through. It's just a wonderful movie. So do you think that in March-ish of 2017, people were really thinking Get Out was going to be an awards movie? Or was it just kind of looked at as a word of mouth sensation? And, you know, maybe it could get some critics prizes. But it's so early in the year outside of the occasional anomaly like the silence of the lambs like we talked about if your movie comes out before may it's really tough to get in at the oscars right i remember there being some hope that maybe this could get into some screenplay categories probably not going to win especially this early in the year it's hard to know what's coming down the pike but we've talked about this before i think with horror unlike other films genres it needs time to gestate and become appreciated by a voting body, by critical awards. It needs the time to be really contemplated and talked about. And that's not even actually just true of just horror. You can see it with something as out there and genre based as Everything Everywhere, which comes out in March and has the time for people to rewatch it, talk about it, discuss it. Oh, you know what? Actually, this would be a movie that should be in contention for some awards. And I think that happened with Get Out and Silence of the Lambs. I mean, I remember when it got in to Best Picture at the Oscars. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> like, that's awesome. I mean, I was hopeful it would get into original screenplay and it did, but then how it 
how well it performed in those other top three categories was really cool. Before we get to the Oscars, Cody, and it's four categories, let's talk about the precursor ceremony, starting at the Golden Globes, where it gets into Best Picture and Best Actor for Daniel Kaluuya, but it's in the musical or comedy category. What do we make of that? This was <laughs> in as controversial as you want to call Golden Globes category placement. This was fairly controversial at the time, even though it's likely where the studio and possibly even Jordan Peele were signed off on it being placed. I can see the thinking. It is a satire. There's enough stuff there with uh, the Lowell Howery character that it has comedic elements. And oftentimes with the Globes, comedic elements is enough for it to equal comedy. Even if the overall impression of the film, its purpose is not to make you laugh. If it has a comedic bent to it, then it often goes in comedy. And also, it probably wasn't helped by the fact that it's directed by Jordan Peele, who at that point was most known for Key and Peele, which is a comedy sketch show. This is his first film. It's a major departure from what... Uh, culturally we thought of him as as opposed to now where he's more of this Hitchcocky and Twilight Zone figure. It didn't win there. It does win two prizes at Critics Choice where it got five nominations. It won Best Sci-Fi Horror Film obviously and it also wins Best Original Screenplay for Jordan Peele. So he wins at Critics Choice and then that's going to help him as we get farther and farther toward the Oscars. At SAG, it gets into two categories, Best Male Actor in a Leading Role for Daniel Kaluuya. It's also nominated for Best Cast. So that was the one place where the entire cast of Get Out got to receive a nomination for the movie. Well, almost the entire cast. This is one of those nominations I think about a lot when it comes to the silly SAG award rules when it comes to ensemble because they have that rule about you can only be nominated if you have an individual card in the credits to yourself. You can't share credit, which means that most notably to me, Betty Gabriel, who plays Georgina the maid, is not nominated in this category, which is really frustrating. Um, wow, neither that's right. is Neither is Lowell Howery as his friend, the TSA agent, Rod, who has a lot of stuff to do. Um, but Stephen Root is nominated for the smaller role of the uh, blind art dealer, but he's more of a name, so that's why that happened. So just kind of the weird billing issues that lead to people getting snubbed at the uh, SAG Awards. This, to me, is the most egregious one we've had. That is really stupid. There should be some bypassing of those rules with the title card or whatever. Like, those two performances you just brought up are very memorable in the movie. How can they not be in Best Cast at SAG? That's crazy. BAFTA, it only gets two nominations, Original Screenplay and Best Actor for Daniel Kaluuya. BAFTA has never been the best in terms of nominating films with primarily black casts, right? So I don't know if that played a role here, if they're not into the genre kind of movie. Uh, but I feel like Get Out could have done better at BAFTA, right? Um, yeah, I'd, I would agree. I mean, it's it's not surprising. And it's a very American film, so maybe that's part of, I, if I'm being generous, part of why that maybe didn't affect BAFTA voters too much. But the same year, they love Three Billboards, which is such hmm. an American film that just happens to come from a European filmmaker. And um, lastly, before the Oscars, Film Independent Spirit Awards, it gets five nominations it wins Best Director for Jordan Peele. It wins Best Feature of the Year at the Film Independent Spirit Awards. That's really cool. Yeah, and that makes sense knowing how the voters, which can be the public, would vote on this award. It's a very popular film. But it does really embody the spirit of independent filmmaking. It is a it's a universal picture, but it's uh, an independently minded film. I, the rules of the indie spirits are always a little tough for me to swallow and wrap my head around, but I'm okay with it here. <laughs> All right, that takes us to the Oscars here, Cody. Get Out gets four nominations. Original Screenplay, Director, Best Actor for Daniel Kaluuya, and Best Picture. If you could give this movie one more nomination, like what would it be? I might say something like Best Score or Best Editing, maybe? Maybe even Production Design. Some of the stuff, especially in the third act. Or if I was going really crazy, I might give a supporting actress nomination to Betty Gabriel, who plays Georgina, the maid. Uh, she is exceptional in the film, and she has very little solo screen time. But what she does with that screen time became immediately iconic. No, I, I agree. I think that would have been a great nomination. I, I mean, I, 
I don't know if like Allison Williams or Bradley Whitford or Katherine Keener were necessarily deserving of Oscar nominations, but I feel like their names could have been more in the mix rather than just Kaluuya. Um, I would also consider the movie for cinematography. I love the look of that movie. From the opening chilling scene all the way to the end on that road, like there's such a great look to that movie. Uh, cinematography would have been cool as well. All right, let's break down these categories, starting with Best Original Screenplay, Cody. The nominees are The Big Sick, Lady Bird, The Shape of Water, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. The winner is Get Out by Jordan Peele. The audience stands on their feet. That was a moment, right, Cody, when Get Out won Original Screenplay. Yeah, it was really great. It was great for Jordan Peele as an exciting new voice in film. He was obviously a known celebrity up to that point, but not really in the film world so much. And it's a horror film, but it is more, I think, to Academy voters, a film with a really defined and original concept, which is the kind of thing that wins an original screenplay. Films like Eternal Sunshine or Her, these movies with very strong very heavy concepts, which Get Out falls right into. This was a very stacked category. And I remember on the night, I was leaning toward either Jordan Peele for Get Out or Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird. I think if Peele wasn't there, Greta Gerwig would have won that pretty easily, I would say, because she got into Best Director, Lady Bird was in Best Picture. That was my favorite film of 2017. I love that movie. And it still bums me out a little bit that Gerwig didn't win anything for Lady Berg. She would have deserved it. Uh, but this is a fantastic win for Peel. Like in the history of horror at the Oscars, Get Out taking original screenplay, one of the best wins ever. The interesting thing is I do think it was pretty clear, at least to me, I remember predicting Get Out to win, that that was going to happen. But second place was... Probably Lady Bird, but it also may have been Three Billboards. Three Billboards peaked a little early and then had a lot of controversy about the content of the film that I think prevented it from doing better than it eventually did. And it doesn't make it into Best Director, which it felt like it was going to at certain points. So by the time the Oscars rolled around, I don't think it was really that close, but there was a time where that was a very strong contender for original screenplay. So that's interesting. So you would put in fourth place the winner of Best Picture and Best Director, The Shape of Water? I would. In original yeah. screenplay? <laughs> I really would. <laughs> I, I feel pretty strongly about that. I don't think the screenplay was getting talked about really at all. And it mostly got in because the film was otherwise beloved. Yeah, I love this win for Jordan Peele. He became the first African-American to win the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. I mean, talk about overdue. So that was a great win for Jordan Peele. I love his speech. Let's move on to Best Actor. The nominees are Timothy Chalamet, Call Me By Your Name, Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread, Daniel Kaluuya, Get Out, Denzel Washington, Roman J. Israel Esquire. The winner is Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. Did Gary Oldman deserve to win that, Cody? I'd say no. <laughs> He's my least favorite of these five nominees. <laughs> but he was never not winning this. he It's one of those awards that was won the second an onset photo was released of him in the makeup. It was just locked in. It was never not going to happen. So much so that I think his obvious frontrunner status kind of drags the film into Best Picture, which is a fine film, but I think it's very obviously the weakest of the Best Picture lineup. Yeah, that was the case. I remember when they released the first still of him in makeup. I went, oh, he's going to win Best <laughs> Actor. Just like when I first saw Meryl Streep as Margaret Thatcher, the first still released was like a year before the movie came out. I was like, well, that's finally going to be her third Oscar. And it was. I mean, who would you say is in second here? Who was closest to beating Oldman if there was a second place? You know, I it's... I, I think it was a far distant second, whoever it was, but I, I do think it probably was Timothy Chalamet. He mm. was very much the critic's pick that year. He won a lot of critic precursors. His film was in Best Picture. Uh, he was a new discovery, uh, but they hate awarding younger men. He would have been by far the youngest Best Actor winner of all time at that point. And I just don't think it was actually going to happen The to the point where the nomination, even though it wasn't a surprise, it still felt like, oh, wow, they really did that. I didn't think they were capable of doing that. 
So I'd say he's probably second place. Maybe Daniel Day Lewis. Maybe, but his nomination was not a surprise. But that film opened really late. Like he doesn't even get a SAG nomination for it because I don't think it was widely seen yet. I don't know. I think it ultimately doesn't matter though because I imagine Gary Oldman got sixty to seventy percent of the vote. I, it's a struggle, man. When it's a movie I don't really much care for, and you see the lead actor in it just sweeping, just from you know ceremony to ceremony, from Golden Globe to the Oscars, you go into the Oscars knowing exactly who's going to win, and there's no suspense. And it's for a movie that's not, you know, great. One of your favorites of the year. I always struggle with that, Cody. I don't know about you. <laughs> Even though yeah, I, 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 it was time I'm... for Oldman to win. Oldman should have an Oscar. That's cool, but yeah. It's the classic thing of, like, you want an actor to win, you've liked them for so long, but the movie comes along that they win for, and you go, but not for this. (laughs) It happens all the time, especially with male actors in particular, I feel like. Yeah, I think Chalamet is probably second here. Imagine if they had called Daniel Kaluuya as the winner. That would have, like, just brought the house down. (laughs) He probably gets my vote, so I wouldn't be too sad about it. Uh, It's kind of sad to think, like, Kaluuya is nominated for Get Out basically everywhere, all season long. He never wins. He didn't even win at Film Independent Spirit. He's only nominated everywhere, which is too bad. Yeah, it, it happens. You know, they're I'm sure they're happy to be there. It maybe even is more of a relief because you don't go into the night going, I might win. <laughs> you go into the night going, I'm just happy to be here. Okay, best director. The nominees are Christopher Nolan, Dunkirk, Jordan Peele, Get Out, Greta Gerwig, Lady Bird, Paul Thomas Anderson, Phantom Thread, the winner... Guillermo del Toro, The Shape of Water. What do we think of Best Director for 2017 at the Oscars? This is one of the best lineups this category has ever had. It is perfect. So much so that personally, I think the winner is probably my least favorite, and it's still a good (laughs) win. It is just exceptional. And I think Martin McDonough was probably this close to getting in, and I don't think, you know, no disrespect to him, we would be talking about this category in that way if he made it in. PTA was a really surprising last minute inclusion. That film screened so late, but man, what a good, what a good lineup, both in terms of quality. It's really diverse, especially for Oscar standards. It holds up. All the films are excellent. I love this lineup. Yeah, this is fantastic. There was some controversy at the Golden Globes when Greta Gerwig was not nominated in Best Director. Remember that moment with Natalie mm-hmm. Portman? Here yep. are the all-male nominees. <laughs> Remember that? That was wild. <laughs> and and it wasn't just because, oh, we should have a female here. It's like, no, she was one of the best directors of the year. As I said, Lady Bird was my favorite movie that year. It's so good. So well done. And I'm thrilled she's here. Any one of these five people winning, I would have been happy. There's not one nominee here. I would have been like, oh, really? Come on. Like Christopher Nolan, this is his first director nomination. And Paul Thomas Anderson still has never won, which is crazy, any Oscar, directing or otherwise. Uh, Greta Gerwig still hasn't won. I mean, Peel got Best Original Screenplay, but he still would have been an all-timer victory here. Um, Guillermo del Toro is one of those directors who should have an Oscar. Like, he's just so gifted, so talented, so original, such a visionary. And The Shape of Water just was the right film at the right time, and he got this, and it's a fantastic win. Now, do you think Jordan Peele getting into director for Get Out was a done deal? Like, original screenplay obviously made sense. He ultimately wins there. Best actor, Kaluuya, had gotten in there all season long. Best picture seemed probable. Was best director guaranteed for peel you know i do think by the time the nomination morning rolled around it felt pretty secure obviously with knowing how the academy works we all were kind of like oh how are they really going to do it felt similarly about greta gerwig with Lady Bird, where it felt reasonable to assume she was going to get in but knowing the academy's history of nominating female directors it's always a scary thing to bet on the big surprise was Paul Thomas Anderson because he was, again, that film screened super late and Martin McDonough was expected to get nominated. So he was the big surprise. I would say Get Out, Jordan Peele's nomination here is probably the third most likely of these nominees, maybe. Yeah, I just think it's really cool. They could have just given him screenplay and said that's it for Peele, but also putting him into director is great. That takes us to Best Picture, Cody. The nominees are Call Me By Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. The winner is The Shape of Water. 
What did we think of Best Picture of 2017? I think this is a pretty stupendous lineup. You know, even if you want to say the weakest in this category is Darkest Hour or Three Billboards, those are still well-made movies, regardless of what you think about them. Or at least they're better than some of the stuff the Academy nominates up to this day. I personally don't love The Shape of Water. I think it is a intentionally messy film. It feels more like collage than comprehensive story to me. But it is so outside of what the Academy usually goes for that I applaud its win here. But Phantom Thread, Lady Bird, Get Out, Call Me By Your Name. I'm can't even, I'm sure I'm forgetting something here, but it's just an incredible line. Dunkirk. It's an incredible lineup. It's so... It encapsulates what the year in film was doing in terms of what it was saying, where its success lied, because we had hits like Dunkirk in here, and where film was going uh, in the future, because there's different voices here, like Jordan Peele and Greta Gerwig. And again, ultimately, The Shape of Water is a good winner here, even if I would not vote for it, personally. Yeah, I like The Shape of Water. It wasn't in my top 10. I think it was in the second 10. I would have that around like fifth or sixth place here. But it's still a great win, as you said. It's not the typical kind of fair that wins the Oscar for Best Picture. You know, we've talked in my 1999 Rewind series about how Best Picture of 99 at the Oscars doesn't really reflect that year very well, especially 25 years on. But Best Picture 2017, this is a stellar lineup that has a mix of like World War II movie, a genre movie, coming of age stories. Like it has a mix of everything. It's such a great lineup that reflects the year in cinema that was 2017. Now, Cody, we have both admitted that going into the Oscars that year, we were predicting Get Out to win Best Picture. Why were we thinking that? A few things. We had just come off of two Oscars in a row that went to films that did not feel like obvious Best Picture winners, Spotlight, Moonlight, that were the types of movies that I have to imagine part of the reason they won is because nobody was placing them very low on a preferential ballot. And I thought that would be the case for Get Out. It was very well liked. It had a lot of buzz at the time because it was just building on its own success. And it just kind of felt like something that was going to happen. You know, I had best I had The Shape of Water winning Best Director, and at that point we were getting, again, really used to picture director splits because it had happened four times already that decade. So it just felt like something that was gonna happen again. And again, we are still in a really politically tumultuous time, and Get Out felt like a movie, much like Moonlight, that was signaling hope for the future, for the future of art, for the future of progress in this country for perspective being told that we hadn't seen, at least on this scale, in Hollywood filmmaking or at the awards especially. And it just kind of felt right. And going off of feeling is not the worst thing in the world when you're people like us who have been obsessing with the Oscars for the better part of our life. And it just kind of felt like what was going to happen. The Shape of Water didn't quite feel like a winner, at least to me. But... We were wrong, obviously. Yeah. In retrospect, it does seem silly that I was predicting Get Out because outside of film independent spirit, like it doesn't really win Best Picture anywhere, right? Like it didn't win SAG Ensemble. It doesn't win Best Picture at like Golden Globes or Critics' Choice or BAFTA or any of those. PGA goes to Shape of Water. So yeah, it was just a feeling I had. It was a gut feeling. This movie, Get Out, was such in the zeitgeist Shape of Water was guaranteed to win director, I thought, for mm -hmm. Del Toro. But I was like, does it have to win picture two? Not necessarily. I feel like there is a lot of passion for Get Out, and it could take it at the end of the day. So it was kind of just a no guts, no glory thing. I thought, it's probably going to be Shape of Water. That's the smart choice. But what if they say Get Out at the end of the night? That would be amazing. All right, Cody, so that takes us to the end here. What are your final thoughts about Get Out and its awards run in early 2018? I think Get Out is kind of a miracle of a film, both in how well it's executed and in how well it did in the awards season, with so many factors going against it. Genre, release date, just general tone of the film. Things that the Oscars usually are repelled by <laughs> this was embraced by, the Academy embraced this film. 
And I think it's really stood the test of time. It's one of the defining films of the decade of this year. There are so many memorable images and concepts. And obviously Jordan Peele has gone on to prove himself to be an amazing director. This is not just a fluke. In fact, this is my least favorite of his three films. And I still love this movie. But I'm just, he, he gets people to the theater based on just his name as a director, which only a small handful of directors can say. Yeah, this was kind of a mini miracle. I mean, you look at his follow-up films, Us and Nope, and they're fantastic. Neither film got a single Oscar nomination, which is insane. I mean, the fact that Get Out gets into top four categories, wins, original screenplay, is fantastic. And I really hope, Cody, this is not the last horror film to get an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Like, bring it on. Let's have some more in the years to come. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. And let me know in the comments below what you think of Get Out and those four Oscar nominations, including that amazing Best Original Screenplay win for Jordan Peele. And we'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.